Hi everyone, Chris Petrie here. Everyone, it's exciting. Splashing, spattering with watercolors. I um, One of my uh, favorite things to do is uh, splash and spatter and um, spray uh, watercolor uh, paint onto my uh, paintings. And uh, you probably noticed that about my work. I, I always do that. I pretty much picked that up from Charles Reed. Um, he does a lot of splashing and spattering on his, his paintings. And I I follow his work all, all the time, uh, study all his books and DVDs and so forth. So I, I just tend to, you know, naturally do it in my style. Um, so, you know, it's it's really incredibly fun. It loosens up your paintings, and I also find that when you think about splashing uh, onto a, a your watercolor paper, um, your paintings, it's something very unique to um, watercolor. You can't really have that effect with either acrylics or oil painting so much. I mean, I'm sure some artists have tried it with uh, acrylics. Uh, if you use like a, a medium to thin down your acrylics, you can probably splash and that, that'll work. Um, but I'm not so, so sure how that'll look on, on the acrylic uh, um, board or paper if you're using those type of things. So acrylic, I haven't seen too many artists use splashing techniques with acrylics, um, but I definitely noticed that a lot of watercolor artists use the splashing technique. Some use it more than others, like some use it a lot in their paintings, some use it just a little bit here and there. It all depends on uh, what artist you're really like looking at and um, observing. But um, I would say, you know, for my observation, most, t you know, today's watercolor artists, like professionals, I would say, mo uh, I would say like 75% of watercolor artists today, professionals and people that are doing it on an ongoing basis all the time, you know, serious uh, hobbyists and so forth, they use the splashing technique with watercolors usually. Um, that's what I've seen and I could probably, you know, list off a whole bunch of artists I know of that I've seen them in videos and on YouTube and so forth splashing with uh, their, their paints, watercolor paints. So most are, you know, most watercolor artists do use the splashing technique and in different, you know, styles and uh, ways of doing this, but for the most part, I just wanted to go over a quick video on how I do it and how I think, um, how how I've seen other artists, water professional watercolor artists do it, and I, I think that uh, you'll have a lot of uh, fun watching this video and gaining a little bit of uh, insight into the splashing and spattering technique, and many of you probably already use it already, so I'm just going to kind of go over it from my perspective, and hopefully uh, it'll be interesting, and so I'm just, you know, going to uh, these are my two brushes I'm kind of using for this demo here. These are two um, uh, Kalinsky Sable uh, round brushes with good points, um, a 12 and a 6. And I have my water container, so I'm going to put that to the side over here, to my right. Um, I have my uh, tissues. These are great for blotting a little bit of water off the paintbrush, blotting some, some paint off of... Uh, the paper a little bit if you want to dry up a little spot or take off some paint or water on your watercolor. Tissues are great for that. And then we have uh, paper towels. These are great. They don't have too much uh, oil in them, paper towels, so you can clean up the palette with them. Works really great. Um, paper towels are also um, good for just, you know, general cleaning up around the studio and so forth. So paper towel is always great to have. Um, and palette here we were talking a little you know on quite a few videos we talk about how we use our palettes uh, this again a spray bottle always have one of these for watercolor artists um, this is a bag ziploc bag with my palette I'm using natural light today by a window um, I know a lot of people say that the videos I'm uh, creating the lighting is a little off so I understand that i um, trying to work on make, getting some better lighting so I'm using some natural light and I think that Natural light works the best, actually, unless you step up to really, really expensive lighting. So here we have just a simple um, palette with fresh squeezed paint. Um, and this is a, a moist, uh, wet paper towel folded up. Leave that in the palette. And then I put my palette in the refrigerator inside the plastic bag, as we just saw it, to keep the paints cool and uh, from drying out during the week. And on weekends, I'll just leave it in the studio here. Um, and I don't really put it in the fridge during the weekends, just not during the week. If I'm not painting maybe a couple nights or something, I just leave it in the fridge and it stays nice like this. And let's start and we'll do just a quick uh, demonstration on splashing and spattering. And 
I think the, um, I guess one thing for certain is size of brush. So the size of brush, bigger brush, you're going to get bigger splashes. Smaller brush, you're going to get more smaller splashes and spattering. So you get more finer splashing and spattering with a smaller brush, and you get bigger splashes with a bigger brush because you're going to have more water inside the the hairs of the brush. So that's really the main thing. So if you can think about it, if you want a little small fine splashing, you would use a smaller brush. If you want bigger splashes, you would use a larger brush. And then from there, you can also control it even more by the amount of paint consistency and paint that you use and water you use. And you can also control your splashing as far as the tonal value of your splashes. So in essence, you know, you can you can really get into the details of the splashing and the paint and so forth by really just thinking of it as your splashing can be you know somewhat similar to your paint so let's go with some cobalt blue okay and I'm going to use the larger brush here so that's cobalt blue and there's not a, a lot of water in it in this mixture here just the you know cobalt blue fresh squeeze paint in this brush here and then if I just do a tap like this and I so the, the technique is sort of swinging the brush downwards toward the palette and towards the paper so the brush is going down toward the paper and then we stop quick before the brush touches the paper and we tap at the same time so it's and I need a little bit more water and paint on my brush so it's just like a downward motion and a short stop and then a tap at the same time okay now if we want a more watery splash with more water more paint then we can just simply make our mixture with more water, more water in the soaking up in the brush hairs. And you see I'm doing the same motion, just downward and tap, down, tap, down and tap. And then we have the bigger splashes. Now that's the straightforward um, technique I use most often. Then um, you can sometimes now we'll go maybe to the smaller brush. Okay, so now we'll go to a number six brush and we'll change the color. Maybe we'll go with a um, okay. We'll go with a liz we'll go with a lizarin crimson and kind of a flower color, a lizarin crimson, and some uh, mineral violet, purpley color. Now here smaller brush and that's a fair amount of water and we'll try the same thing and then as the brush loses most of the water and paint in it it'll it'll tend to get less bigger splashes and smaller speckles so it's really the control of the paint and water in the brush that's really the the, the factor and then also too you'll see some artists they some artists you'll see sometimes they'll maybe take their finger and just do some splashing like that they'll just take their finger and tap the brush on their finger um, I've seen artists also they will use another brush and then tap that you can get some really really super fine uh, speckles with using another brush so you tap on the brush close to the paper and you could do it more higher up and you'd get more of a so you can have some fun with this Tr try it out um, try different uh, techniques and things and and you know different colors and so forth and but that's you know a lot of artists use that the uh, brush on brush um, my technique again is just really just kind of straightforward because when I'm painting I'm sort of always thinking time I gotta hurry it up and watercolor is a fast medium so 
if I just take the watercolor and just quick do splashes and then you can always uh, get some paint get some paint and then dry it out a little bit on some paper towels and then you know you can get some finer and you can make it lighter in value you know you can make it darker in value so really you can just have fun you know play around with different ideas tonal values like within the splashes you know what's the tonal values of the splashes how much water you're using as compared to how much paint is in your water how much water using you know using a lot of water you know using a lot of water can really get some big splashes and then if you you know just using a little bit of using a uh, you know, smaller amount of smaller brush you know gets get some get some finer splashing and that's really the splashing and spattering technique it's kind of simple um, and you can kind of just you know work on some fun time you know it's always good to have some fun time with watercolors just take out a piece of paper and just have some fun and it's not so much a serious thing where you're doing a finished painting but this is really a good way to kind of practice uh, the uh, splashing technique a little bit you know every once in a while just on a, on a piece of paper watercolor paper for fun and see what kind of different techniques you have and then when you're painting when you're actually in there doing a painting you're just automatically gonna kind of like use the techniques that you've practiced for fun um, so it's good to practice a little bit of the technique first and then as you're painting you'll remember oh yeah I'm I was practicing that technique, you know, uh, you know, during some fun time, just splashing around on, on some paper here. And then that'll automatically translate right into your painting. And you'll do the same thing you were doing here with uh, the paint, um, with the fun time of just practicing the technique of splashing and spattering. So I hope this was helpful. Hope uh, you have some fun with the splashing technique. And again, it's a great technique to use in your paintings for watercolor artists. Not everybody likes it. I know that. Sometimes people once in a while will say, you know, Chris, I don't like the splashing so much on your paintings and that's fine everyone's different some people do not like it at all and that's totally understandable but you know most people do like a little bit of splashing here and there and on their watercolor paintings as far as artists go and a lot of people like it that view art and buy and purchase art so um, you're always safe with using the splashing and spattering technique in your painting uh, as you uh, paint and create your your art okay let's uh, meet up again in the very near future we'll see everybody on the next video bye bye